So in today's video, we are going to answer one of the most often asked questions. How much did it cost to build this house in Thailand? So as I always do, I preface all of these cost of living videos and different types of estimates. Everybody is in a completely different situation. The cost that we are going to be giving you is for the house only. As far as the land, I don't know what the value of the land is. Uh, Apple already owned the land, so all we basically did was build a house on it. It is a very nice corner lot. You can see the border of the property, and you should have gotten a really, really good idea uh, based on the drone shots that was the introduction to this video. But I am going to cover the trials and tribulations of what we went through. There was uh, a bit of a struggle at times, and... Um, yeah, it was a brand new thing for us. We've never done this before and we are going to do that. And at the end of the video, we are gonna give you a cost breakdown and hopefully that will answer your guys' questions. So let's get into it. So Apple and I spent some time looking at uh, house plans online and we found a really nice setup. Uh, I think it was three bedrooms. It was two levels. It was basically this house. It was just uh, downsized quite a lot. So uh, we purchased the architectural plan and then the next step was to find a builder contractor. So your uncle recommended a local contractor. So we came out here again, we had a meeting, he studied the plan, he looked at the land, the plot of land, and he was really excited that we had this nice corner lot alongside a very busy road. And he's accustomed to building gigantic houses for the wealthy government officials, but not in this area, in other areas like Bangkok, Chiang Mai. Central. Central, yeah. yeah. So he never had anything to show for here in his local area. So his idea was, I will stick to your basic concept for your the house that you want on this plan, but I'm going to redraw it. I'm going to make it bigger, I'm going to make it better, and I'm going to make it to a size that not only fits this plot of land better, but also he's able to show what he's capable of as a builder. He wanted like a show house, something that all these people going up and down this road see his work. So we were kind of afraid of the budget. It was going to get really, really expensive because he was talking like lots of real expensive stuff. But anyway, he came back with a design. It was very over budget, but uh, we came to a compromise. He said, let me build the house beautiful for you. I will stick to the basic, um, how many bedrooms and levels and that sort of thing. And I will build it at my cost because he just basically wanted the opportunity to build a house beautiful in his eyes. So we kind of, rather than dictating everything to him, we let him have the freedom to be an artisan and actually build a beautiful house for us. And we were going to benefit by not having to pay full price, basically. So mm -hmm. that is what happened, you guys. And so now we're gonna get into some of the breakdown of the things that we added or took away uh, to kind of fit within our budget. And it was, uh, it was interesting, but um, let's continue. <laughs> so something that was included in the price of the house was this gate and the perimeter wall and all the lights that go along with it. The room behind me, which was going to be my gym, was included, but the actual flooring and the gym equipment was not included. In our cost of living video, some of you guys recommended solar. Uh, you can see behind me, and also you could have seen it from the drone shot. We do have some solar panels, but it's just supplemental solar. We weren't really sure exactly uh, how deep we wanted to get into the solar because we do have pretty reliable electricity here, and it doesn't, it's not that expensive. I don't feel it is anyway, but, but the supplemental solar basically uh, powers all the perimeter lights on those on the wall 
And so at night, those things turn on. And also the lights uh, around the outside of our house also will be on every night. And that's all done by solar. So it would be nice to expand more uh, and get, get some more of that um, electricity into the house from the solar panels, but we'll have to get uh, more panels and more batteries. So we'll see. I don't know how important it is right now, but um, it's something for us to consider. But to answer your guys' comments, we already do have some supplemental solar here at the house. The koi pond behind me was included, uh, as well as the pump and the system that went with it. So that was uh, one of the things that I wanted to have for the house. And it's pretty cool. It goes underneath the stairs. All the flooring and the deck, everything was included. This island was uh, included. This sink also included, but not these uh, appliances, but also these um, cabinets, they are included. This house has what they call uh, built-in furniture, for example, this cabinet. Also built-in included. Also part of a uh, built-in furniture, we have cabinets here and here and vanity. The bed frame was also included, but not those nightstand. So there is built-in furniture in every room in this house, including a bed frame in every room. Uh, those were all considered built-in items and were included in the price of the house. Uh, there was supposed to be some built-in furniture downstairs in another bedroom, but I didn't see the need for it and I wanted this big fish tank. So what I did is I sacrificed some of the built-in furniture that was supposed to go downstairs and what happened was the trade-off was this stand and tank and everything pretty much as you see it. Uh, that was a trade-off. So give and take, right? <laughs> So this house is basically built with steel and concrete. Uh, there's no wood in the frames or anything. The only wood in this house is going to be your doors, your window frames, that sort of stuff. It's all teak. And as you can see, the height of all of these rooms is pretty extreme. And so you can see on the doors and the frames and everything, uh, everything is quite tall. But that is all teak wood and the house is super solid. I mean, this house is really, really solid. So we're gonna get into some of the construction, you guys. Um, Apple and I separated for about seven months. I had to go back to the US to work and earn money and be able to send money over here to Apple so she could pay according to the contract. It was quite stressful for me. I was hustling harder than I ever have in my entire life. I was doing expos by myself. I was hiring people to, to help me. It was, it was hardcore. I was going at it hard and I was all by myself. And yet at the same time, Apple was over here by herself and basically supervising the construction of this house. So, I highly recommend to have somebody trustworthy supervising construction, especially here, probably anywhere in the world, because if you're not there to watch, they can easily cheat on materials, uh, the various gauges of steel and rebar and everything. You know, they can, they can cheap out on stuff like that because once it's built, mm -hmm. You can't see it anymore. Yeah, we get poor concrete and you can't see what's inside. Yeah, you don't know what's behind those walls and under those floors. So Apple was here, she learned a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, she was paying attention to the contractor. He was telling her exactly like what number or what gauge certain things were supposed to be. And she actually caught the, the builders um, cheating on some of the stuff where mm -hmm. 
you know, some rebar was supposed to be a certain size and it was smaller, it was cheaper. And we don't know if it was just a mistake or if somebody was uh, taking money on the side and, and whatever, we don't even know, but it is just to be expected. And so having somebody here to supervise was super, super important. And Apple did an awesome job. And then when we finally reunited, um, and then of course, I came over and then we went back to the US. Uh, the house was basically built um, and everything that was left to be done were things that we could see and in inspect later. So for example, if the cabinets weren't done or the windows or whatever, or all that stuff that remained, those were all things that we could come in and see, inspect and improve uh, ourselves. So that was, that was, uh, that was a challenge, but it worked out. It was a big sacrifice, but um, somehow it worked out. Yeah. It's okay. Just, it's okay. Like, just like, I'm, I was here for the big major stuff from the very beginning, like a, like a concrete pole, um, foundation. The, the foundation, the frame uh, of those reinforcements, they caught it. But at the end, of course, six months later, and then you came and picked me up, and then the thing that left the haven't done yet was uh, all the built-in furnitures. Yeah, all the stuff that we could yeah. approve uh, painting. With, with our eyes. Yeah, paint, mm -hmm. painting and uh, tile floor mm -hmm. and this, all that stuff. Those were all things that we could see. The bathrooms, all the tile, uh, and that was all included in the price as well. Um, some, some of the tile, the tile was budgeted at a certain price per square meter. Right. And we were looking at what we could get for that price and some of it was okay, some of it was not. So we stepped up a little bit higher grade and paid the difference mm -hmm. on some of the tile. Right. So, and then um, sinks and toilets and you got uh, butt washers on all the, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but Apple went Spray. crazy. Got, uh, sprayers on all the toilet seats. Um, mm -hmm. There's a urinal downstairs as well as a toilet in my gym. And uh, what else was there? The air conditioning units were not included. Apple no. went really crazy, but I'm kind of glad that she did. I think there's eight air conditioning units in this house. Well, it's Thailand. Summer system is crazy hot. Yeah. So without aircon, you can't live here in Thailand. Right. But a lot of times, uh, air conditioning units will share a compressor but we have a oh. separate compressor <laughs> yeah. for every single air conditioning mm -hmm. unit has its own compressor. So that way, if you if a compressor goes down, it doesn't take out like two AC units. Uh, you can still run, you know, mm -hmm. you have separate right. separate uh, individual units. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's actually happening right now. We have one air conditioning unit that we're waiting on a part. And so, but it's okay because we have another air conditioning yes. unit that we can run no problem. And it is really hot right now, you guys, for a foreigner like me. Ooh, man. And the aircon is off right now, so he's sweaty. He's <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Is it off? Oh, it is off. Yeah. So the contract that we agreed to was 7 million baht. Basically, that's 240,000 US dollars, plus an additional 14,000 for the air conditioning units installed and another $4,000 for solar. And so the basic kind of bare bones house came to a total of roughly 270,000 US dollars. And keep in mind that that figure does not include appliances, furniture, and the gym equipment. That was a big amount of money. And that rubber floor also that's in the gym. And so you can pretty much figure all that stuff out for yourself. You know, obviously there's a huge variation in price of appliances, brand name, non-brand name, furniture, the same, uh, all that sort of thing. So, you know, it adds up of course, and the completed house can end up costing, you know, quite a bit more. Than so that is the breakdown on the cost of our house here in Thailand. And again, remember it is going to be different everywhere you go, but I know that towards the end, the builder was having some issues with money. Mm -hmm. I think he under budgeted 
himself when he put the contract together. So I think costs went up above and beyond what he had anticipated. So uh, they did fulfill their contract. We paid as agreed. Yeah. Um, and then they also fulfilled the contract as well. But I think, I don't think they budgeted quite correctly for it. Uh, I also know that um, the builder said that he would not build another house like this for anywhere even close. I think he said minimum like double he would consider it. So, mm -hmm. um, and there was somebody on his side that was handling the money that I was paying my money to. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was also uh, an issue of, of them not managing the money correctly. Cause I don't know where it was going. I was just sending payments to who I was told to send payments to. So uh, I'm not really sure. But anyway, there is no construction project. There is no build project that comes without its bumps along the way. Mm -hmm. And we had our fair share of them as well. And it didn't really get finished on time either. No. Yeah. It didn't go like super beyond the completion date, but it did not go quite according to plan, but they did finish it. Cause I know that there's a lot of people that end up with half finished homes and people just leave and they just leave them hanging. Mm -hmm. And they never- I won't let that happen. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we were watching for that as well. Cause we really weren't really sure how it was all gonna go down. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have now been in Thailand for six months living here for six months. I am going to do a video here before too long, giving my impressions and my feelings of what it's like to be an expat living here in Thailand. Although you have to also kind of put a filter on it. We are also in the middle of a pandemic, mm -hmm. so we haven't been able to travel and do a lot of stuff. There's a lot of um, restrictions and things going on. So it's definitely not normal times. So I'm not able to travel. Yeah, it's just a little bit different it's not normal but uh, anyway I've been here for six months so I guess I can give my my impressions of what it's like to live here so that is about it you guys I hope you enjoyed the video it answered some of your questions and we will see you in the next one thank you for watching take care <laughs>